Hello, everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to solve the specialty packaging corporation forecasting case from the supply chain management book from Chopra and Mendy. Here you can see the case text. So mainly it's uh, about a new vice president of the marketing who is going to look into the demand forecasting. And uh, here, so here we introduce the case context and here we discuss the uh, manufacturing process of the plastics. But here starts our main uh, case context. So here we are saying that, okay, over the past five years, the packaging, the plastic packaging business has grown steadily. Demand for containers made from clear plastic, plastic comes from grocery stores and black bakeries and restaurants. So there are two types of plastic, clear and black. Okay, so clear comes from grocery uh, and bakers and restaurants. And then caterers and grocery stores use the black plastic trays as packaging and serving trays. Demand for clear plastic peaks in the summer months, whereas demand for black plastic containers peaks in the fall. So we see that there is a seasonal effect and it differs for the two different types of plastics. Okay, and the capacity of the extruders is not sufficient to cover demand for the sheets during the peak season. So as a result, the plant is forced to build inventory of each type of sheet in anticipation of future demand. And we have two tables and figures where we are given some uh, demand data. And using those, we actually have to find out some forecast. We have to do some forecasting. So here, in the, in, in the task, it is mentioned that we have to do the forecasting for the years five to eight. So we are given data of five years, and then we have to forecast year six to eight, okay? And so here the question is, so which forecasting methods are the most appropriate and likely to give us the lowest error? So which methods to choose and why? So now let's go down and, and have a look into the data. So here we see the data, okay, demand data. So here we have the years and then the different quarters, okay? And here we can see, uh, the plot of the data. So it's a good idea always to plot your data, time series data before proceeding with the forecasting. So here you can quickly see the patterns in the data. So for example, the black plastic demand, as we can see here, it normally goes up in the fall, okay? And then for the clear plastic, it goes up in the spring, uh, spring times, okay, in the quarter two, okay? So black one goes up in the quarter four, and then the clear one goes up in the quarter two. So here we can already now see that we need a model that can handle seasonality. Okay, so if we use models that cannot handle seasonality, we are likely to see poor forecast performance. Okay, so now I have prepared an Excel file where I'm going to show you the solution of the black plastic. And I believe following the same approach, we can solve it easily for the clear plastic. Okay. So here I have put simply the data that we are given here in the case, okay? This black plastic data. So that's it here. And then we have the quarters and then we have the years. I have also added a column on prior because we are going to use it, okay? So we are going to do three things. First, we are going to simply plot the knife forecast, which is the basic one, just assuming that, okay, the forecast of tomorrow will be same as today. So normally the idea is that our forecast model should perform better than the naive one. So we are going to consider that. Then we are going to do a univariate regression model for seasonal time series data. Okay, so that's a very interesting approach to do forecasting uh, when we have seasonal data. And then we are going to do the halt winters model, uh, which can account for trend level and season so we are going to do the halt winters. So these are the three things we are going to do, but as a bonus, we are also going to try some combination of these halt winters and regression, okay? So now let's first put the naive model here, so which is very simple. We are simply going to say that our forecast today is going to be same as yesterday. So we will start from here and we say, okay, today's forecast is going to be what it was in yesterday. And then we are just going to drag it up to this point. And here we can also still take this one, the demand data we have. But after that, we can't really have any new data points. So what we can do is we can fix this cell 
okay? Uh, we put the dollar symbols. In my computer, I use F4. I select the cell and then I press F4. Uh, you can manually put the dollar symbols. And for Max, I think you have to press Command and F4, okay? But anyway, then we fix it and then we are going to drag it up to this point. So we are not going to have any new forecast because we don't have data, okay? So here we have data until five year, but for six, seven, and eight, we don't have any data, so we can't do much. Then it's a good idea to quickly calculate the error that we can see here. So to calculate the error here, we are following the MAP. There are several metrics for error calculation, but in this case, we are now going to focus only on the MAP, that is mean absolute percentage error. You can see the equation here as well, where A is the actual value and Y is the forecasted value. So here we are going to take absolute, and then here is our actual value minus the forecast value. In this case, it would be the previous peers value. And we are then going to divide it by the actual value to get the rate of error, okay? And then we are going to drag it. Here you see I'm using the percentage, okay? So that's why all my values are already in percentage. If you use number, you get uh, zeros like this. So one way to convert, uh, you, you get two decimal, to two decimal values here. And one way to convert them to percentage would be to multiply with 100, as you can see in the equation. Or another simple way could be just to select this and say, give us in percentage. So it multiplies with 100 and gives you the values here. And the total MAP is simply the average of all these uh, percentage errors, okay? So that's the that's our MAPE. But here, our main interest is on the seasonal modeling using univariate regression. So for that first, what we have to do is we have to calculate something called seasonal index. And to do that, what we are going to do is here, we are going to calculate a seasonal score for each of the quarters. So here we are going to start with the function and we are going to call, say, uh, we are going to use the command average, okay? And we take, for quarter one, we take all the values of the quarter one. So I take this one from quarter one, from year one, this one from quarter one, from year two, then from year three, then from year four, and then from year five, okay? So I just take the five quarter ones from the, five different years and take their average, okay? And then press enter. So this is my average for the quarter one. And I'm just going to scroll it down for the four peers. And then we see that we have done the same for the four quarters, okay? Now here to calculate the seasonal index, we are simply going to divide each of these average values for the quarters. We are going to divide them by their average of all the quarters. So from here to here. Then we have to fix this part with the dollars. So here you can put the dollars manually or you can press F4 in Windows or Command F4 in Mac, okay? So we, when we put the dollar symbols here, we can drag it and then the range from where it takes the average in the denominator, that is not going to change okay so enter and then we just drag it here okay so these are our seasonal seasonal values seasonal index values for the black plastic now this approach univariate regression approach it's a static approach and here in this approach the seasonal values do not change over time so they are going to be same for every uh, every years okay so i'm just going to drag it from here to here and then we can drag it again from, uh, I select this one. And then if I drag it down here and just select the one above and then I can drag it. Okay. It might be a good idea also to have it down here for the other peers. Okay, we always just drag up to four peers. Okay.
great. So if we just change the values here, it will change in all the places. So that, that's why we are, if we just change the values here, then it's going to change in all the places. Okay. So that, that was, that's the beauty of connecting all of them using the equal to. Okay. Now, first, what we are going to do is we are going to calculate something called deseasonalized values. Okay. And to calculate the deseasonal values, we are simply going to divide the D1 values by the seasonal index. Okay, so that's how we calculate the deseasonalized values. And we can do it only up to this period because we have data only up to this period. And after that, we don't have any data, right? So we can calculate the deseasonalized forecast, uh, deseasonalized values of the demand data. So now that we have calculated the deseasonalized values, we can use it to get some estimates using a univariate regression model so the purpose of deseasonalizing it was that we kind of try to take out the heteroscedasticity or like the heterogeneity in the data. Uh, so kind of that was the idea here to make the data a bit more stable. And then if we use a regression, we, will, we are likely to get more stable regression coefficients. Okay. So now to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to data and then here we are going to use the data analysis tool, okay? So if you don't have the data analysis tool, you should go to file, then you should go to options. And here in add-ins, if you go in add-ins and then go here, you will find that you have a data analysis tool back. Just select this and click okay. Then you will have the data analysis tool here, okay? And you can do the solver also the same way if you don't have solver here, okay? So now we are going to do the data analysis and then we are, we, we, we are going to run a regression here. So we click on regression. So in this regression, our Y range is going to be the dependent variable, which in this case is this data of this is analyzed demand. Okay. And our input range, the independent variable is going to be the period. That was the reason why we created this column with period. So from this regression, what we are going to get is that for increasing in each period, how our demand values change. Okay, so that's what we are going to get. And here, where do you want the output? Okay, so here I'm going to, I, I, I want it in the same Excel sheet. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to, let's say click here and I'm going to say, okay. And then we get this regression somewhere here. If you scroll down, you see these two values, which are going to be useful for our forecast modeling. Uh, I should use a different color. Let's say I use uh, this one. Okay. So here we have the intercept, so which is our kind of the level value. And then the X variable is the coefficient for the period variable. So here from the, from the intercept, the level value, how much it increases, the demand increases for every increase in time period for every time period increase, okay? So now we can actually use this information to calculate a demand decisionalized forecast, okay? So we go here in the intercept and we are going to fix this cell with the four plus. Then we are going to select this one and we are also going to fix this multiplied with the period here. And of course, period will not be fixed because we are going to drag it down and then period can move, okay? So here we press enter and then we go down. We drag it up to this point. Okay. And now the cool thing about this is that actually using this, we can also do forecasting for the period six, uh, for the year six to eight. All we need is these two cells and the values for period. And for period, we have the values. It's just continuous from 2021 and so on. So we can simply drag also up to this part here, okay? So when we drag it, then we have that. This is analyzed forecast for this value, this part as well, okay? Now that we have this this is analyzed forecast, now we can convert it very easily to normal level forecast, taking into account the seasonal index again. 
So what we are going to do is simply, we are going to multiply the seasonalist forecast values with their seasonal index values, corresponding seasonal index values. And then we are just going to drag it up to this point, okay? And then we have all the forecasts. It could be a good idea to change the color back to what it was, okay? So now we have, this is our training sample forecast and this is our out sample forecast, okay? And to calculate the MAP, we are simply going to follow the MAP equation as before. So we are going to take absolute of uh, this demand minus the forecasted value divided by the actual demand value for that period, enter. Then we are going to drag it up to this point. We already see it looks like the forecast has improved significantly. And then if we are going to take the average of all these forecast errors, then we are going to get the average forecast error, which is the MAP, in so mean parcel depth and pH error, which is about 10.19%. Now we see that it is much better than our naive forecast errors, okay? So this is how using Seasonal index and univariate progression, we can do forecasting of seasonal models, and it is often a very powerful tool. In the next part, we are going to look into the application of halt winters forecasting model in this context.